Today on the awesome tutorial, today we're going to be looking at electrode, the electromagnetic spectrum, and uses of electromagnetic waves. So first of all, are electromagnetic waves transverse or longitudinal? They are transverse, which means that they oscillate perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. Electromagnetic waves are made up of oscillating and magnetic electric fields. Oscillating means just vibrating regularly. Vibrating regularly. And you can see over here, we have a diagram of an electromagnetic wave. <clears throat> electromagnetic waves do not require a medium or particles in which to transfer energy through, like um, mechanical waves. And so they can travel in a vacuum, like space, where there are no particles. And here we have the electromagnetic spectrum. Here with the longest wavelength, we have radio waves. Then we have microwaves. Then we have infrared waves. Then we have the visible light, then we have UV radiation, which is ultraviolet radiation, then we have x-rays, then we have gamma rays, or gamma radiation. And here, at this side of the electromagnetic spectrum, the wavelength is longer. And as you go down the electromagnetic spectrum, the wavelength gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And short wavelengths of, of electromagnetic waves, such as gamma rays, they have high energy. So short wavelength waves of, electro of the electromagnetic spectrum, they have high energy. Whereas here, there is low energy. The frequency, of course, here is going to be higher. And here, the frequency is going to be low. Now, it is very important that you memorize the electromagnetic spectrum. So I have made a mnemonic, well, actually, I found it on the internet. Um, rabid monkeys in velvet underpants excrete gummy bears. Of course, it would be much more useful for you to create a mnemonic of your own, so then you remember it eas uh, more easily. And now we're going to move on to the uses of electromagnetic waves. Okay, so let's look at radio waves. Now, radio waves can be used for radio transmissions, which usually have a longer wavelength, and terrestrial TV, which usually have a short wavelength, which I did go over in a previous video called Waves. You should check it out. Now, the wavelength and frequency of a radio wave affects how far they go, how much they spread, and how much information they can carry. Shorter wavelengths can usually carry more information. And long wavelengths usually have a bigger range. Now let's look at this diagram here. Here is Earth. Here we have a house. It wants to receive signals for a TV channel from this transmitter all the way here. Now we have this layer in the atmosphere called the ionosphere. And the ionosphere is made up of charged particles. And when we send a radio wave from the transmitter, when it hits the atmosphere, it will be reflected. So uh, radio waves, they are reflected off of the ionosphere. And that is why we do not use them for communication with satellites. However, they are very useful by reflecting off the atmosphere. We can send them across longer distances. And oh yeah, one thing I forgot to tell you about electromagnetic waves in general is that they travel at the speed of light. And the speed of light is around 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All electromagnetic waves, not just radio waves, all travel at the speed of light, which is usually around this value. In the exam, if they give you a question where you have to use the equation V equals F lambda, they will give you the speed in the question, whether it's an electromagnetic wave or a sound wave or whatever.
next. Okay, so microwaves. Now microwaves, we usually use them in mobile devices, such as the mobile phone, which transmits and receives these um, signals um, transferred by the microwaves. These signals carried by the microwaves. So the microwaves, they carry the signals. And usually we have mobile phone masts which allow the signals to be transferred or received from longer distances. Because if you're not near a mobile phone mast, your phone usually has no service. And that's bad. Now we have an issue with microwaves, is that um, they um, give off microwave radiation. And obviously in our phones, because they transmit and receive microwaves, they give off microwave radiation. And the real problem with this that people think um, is an issue is that these are absorbed by the body. The microwave radiation is absorbed by the body. And because um, electromagnetic waves are always, they transfer energy. It causes heating, such as in the body's tissues. And obviously that's not good because it will damage or kill the cells. However, the energy that is given off, that is transferred, sorry, is very small and the heating is also very small. So people do not think it's a problem and scientific studies have shown that it's mobile phones are safe. However, we're not certain yet. And here we have the same diagram we had for um, radio waves, except this time, when the waves are transmitted, they can pass through the atmosphere. Because they can pass through the atmosphere, we can use microwaves to communicate with satellites. Such as in this diagram here. And the satellites, they can um, beam these signals back down to Earth. Next. So, infrared radiation. Now, they are used in TV remotes to transmit the signals wirelessly. And they can also be used in infrared cameras such as this one here, here is a picture, and as you can see, there is infrared radiation coming from the human. Why? Because we emit infrared radiation as heat. And obviously, this allows um, the infrared cameras to be used in security, say to catch a robber, because he will give off infrared radiation, the camera detects this, and the alarm is set off, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, the tree and the grass emit some infrared, but not, but not as much as the human. So optical fibers. Now when you think of optical fibers, you think of light. However, in some cases, like in communication systems, we use infrared. Why? Because they are absorbed less than light by the glass fibers. Now we're going to move on to the uses of light. Okay, so light. First of all, if we have white light, and we shine it onto a prism, into a prism, it refracts. And it refracts into the different colors of the spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and blue, violet. Roy G. Biff. Now light can be used in a film camera, where light is focused onto a light sensitive film. Obviously it's focused by lenses, or lens, which you call the camera lens. It can also be used in a digital camera, where light is also focused, but not onto a light-sensitive then uh, film, in which case the image would have to develop. But here it's, it's focused onto a sensor. And then the sensor it generates an image which uh, forms as pixels. Now obviously light can also be used in optic fibers, which is the most common use. Not, not most common use, but it's a, it's a very important use. Why light? Or why infrared radiation as well, compared to the other um, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum? Because they can carry more information. Why can light carry more information? Because it has a smaller wavelength. Lambda just means wavelength, and these three dots just mean because. They're also more secure. Why are they more secure? Because these signals they stay in the fiber. 
Why did the signals stay in the fiber? Because of something called total internal reflection, which I went over in a, another video, over that video is module 3. You do not need to know the um, how total internal uh, how mm -hmm. You do not need to know how total internal reflection works, but it's useful to know what it is here. Which it basically means light reflects and reflects and reflects and reflects, staying in the optic fiber. This has been the awesome tutor. Bye.